Blasting off the block at Bonhams in New York Tuesday is this collection of rare space history artifacts, like this emblem from Apollo 11, the first flight to put man on the moon, carried into lunar orbit and signed by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. This motion picture sight ring used during Apollo 15 and an Apollo 12 shoulder strap embedded with lunar dust one of the holy grails for space collectors. It's something that you cannot legally buy, moon dust or moon rock. You can't get any of that from the Apollo mission. The only way you can get close to it is if you have something that came into contact with moon dust and the moon dust accidentally you know, stuck to it. And you have an item in this sale. We have sale. an item in the sale, yeah. We have a lunar module stowage strap um, that was in the lunar module doing Apollo 12. Uh, the astronauts had gone out and done some EVAs, extravehicular activity, and the moon dust stuck to their suits. And they came back into the lunar module and touched this strap, and that dust got embedded into the fabric. Anything that's flown to the lunar surface is important, mm -hmm. but it also has the moon dust. So it's actually one of these double whammy kind of pieces where it, you, you're going to have two different types of collectors going for it. Right. So. Cassandra, for serious collectors of space memorabilia, what are the important qualities they're looking for? So they're looking for items that have really great provenance, um, and generally that's something that came directly from an astronaut. Um, items that have flown in space, that have been in lunar orbit, that have gone to the moon's surface, those are really big uh, areas that people collect in. And then things that were signed by astronauts or owned directly by astronauts. So those are kind of the three top areas. And then of course there are the super cool space suits. Looking for a present for the billionaire who has everything, this Mercury spacesuit would be the perfect Halloween costume. They were tiny, you know. They were the tiny. Sky. What size is this? Look, it is just about my size. I'm in flat feet, shoulder to shoulder. It was really important um, that they had smaller people. Uh, the capsules were tiny, but also they found that the taller you are, the more G-forces affect you. So you uh, have a lot more vomiting, nausea, you black out, and generally smaller people don't have those problems when they go up in space. And for the Cold War space race buff, there's a surprising array of items from the Soviet they, they space program. They have kind program. of a different approach to how they deal with the material. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., we're very, um, very much wanting to keep it in museums, and we have it yeah. at the Smithsonian. And they just, you know, I think they just look at it a little differently. There are over 300 artifacts up for sale, and not all of the estimated prices are out of this world. Some autographed photos are expected to go for as little as $100. But as interest in the space race era takes off, Bonham says many items here have quadrupled in value over the past decades. And with the space artifact law of 2012 clearing up ownership issues between NASA and the astronauts, prices for the more coveted pieces could blast into the stratosphere.